Well, Bishop, thank you very much for spending time to be with us today. Being a clergyman runs in your family, doesn't it? Yes. Tell me a bit about your father. Yes, um, my father came from Niwa Toputapu. That's the island hit by the tsunami in the last one. He came as a Methodist and had his education and uh, it happened to the um, Anglican priest in the time of his last uh, uh, year at the secondary school approached him to consider teaching in the Anglican school and then he joined <laughs> and since then all, all of us are Anglicans. Because he, he went to Suva to, to train as a, as a minister. Was, was that hard for you as a family? Because you, you were one of a, a number of children, weren't you? Yes. Um, it is one of those things I try to understand. Uh, because when he was called for training, the money was only sufficient for him. And I have sisters and brothers, and there were 10 of us. And the reason why I will never forget that, um, because I, I thought when, they, when we said goodbye to him, he would go and come back after a few days. And looking back, I was totally lost, but no one to talk to. Um, However, that hugely impact in my work because um, I was the first principal of our theological college and students on those days did not know my journey in life. I made a policy for myself that I will never allow anyone from a family to go for training without taking the whole family. <laughs> Because one of the things you talk about is, is the importance of, of hospitality. And you, you talk about that, that as being a key. Yes, um, you see, when Dad went, all what I knew, the, um, my mother um, asked um, the children, we took 10, going to our aunties and uncles and, um, and said to them, we have no food. And so as on my father's side, and that is the kind of hospitality that is deeply um, ingrained in me. Because when I ask who took care of the family when dad went for training, it was the extended family. And I ask myself, did the church ever ask that question? When they took dad for training, did they ask him who would take care of your children? What would my father say? I'm not, I don't like to guess. I, I probably, he said, God would take care of us. And if that is what he said, I'm one of those who will say, yes, it is true. I can look back, um, I, all what I can say, although I name extended families, it was God, because the reason why they came to help us, because they knew that was on a business to do with God. <laughs> <laughs> the area that, that will be yours, that will be effectively your, where you work, is huge. It's, it's like, you know, that's a quarter of a world surface. It's a vast area. Is that daunting for you? Yes. Um, if you ask me that, um, Ten years ago, I would think that way. I come now to understand something about the mystery of God's call. I thought it was a prophetic move on those who name it. Because now, with the, in terms of the climate change, we are among the best uh, uh, positions to articulate that um, the issue of creation is central in our understanding of the scripture and also in our understanding of the nature of God. Can I say, it's vast, 
but maybe that's what we need to grab. It's vast because it's full of God's creation. So rich and diverse there. Can I put it in another way? It's not vast, it's so abundant. <laughs> and maybe what we need to say to the world, with these abundant gifts of God, can we look again the way how we go about with life? Obviously climate change is a, is a key issue in, in the Pacific. What other issues do you see as, as being the key ones that you'll, you'll have to deal with on a daily basis? I believe people are looking for something deep. People are, they may use the notion God, they may use other things, but they are looking for something deep. I believe I have something to contribute. I'm clear on my head that is God's gift for me. I can only offer what I have experienced in God. That something deep has come to us in Christ. It's not something we can argue about or put up philosophy and so forth. It's already revealed. The second part that I really committed to, I have come through a generation we talk so much about young people. I would like to take a leadership. We don't talk. <laughs> we give way to the young people to take their leadership. And in the last five years when I was a bishop here for our diocese, that's what I committed to and I have seen the glory of that. When we give way to the young people to take their own space, to speak their own voice and to do leadership, I just marvel. And I think the third one is, um, I, I like to, to say as an ordained person, I like to go and work alongside our ordained leaders first. Many of us look very tired. Many, some of us look stressed. And I wonder whether we overdo things and some of the things should be released for those who can do it better. Because if we can do that first, then we can be more effective by working together with members of the congregation. And in addition to that, the church is relevant when we have something to offer to the wider community and engagement with, with the wider community. I don't see the church as an in-house business. I see us, we are core because of the wider community and not only in the Pacific. What can we offer to Europe? What can we offer to North America? Maybe our articulating of the climate change from where we believe God is very much alive there, we can have something distinct. Is it difficult to, to work with, with within an area where there are a number of political issues that are sort of running, running parallel in different, in different countries in the Pacific? I think the, um, the way I observed of what is going on is actually real. We only became independent since the mid-1970s. When we were under colonial rules, we pointed fingers and we knew exactly what to say. <laughs> now when those positions are now, were given to us, um, in my observation, some of us fall worst perhaps or similar, but we need another way of articulating it. Because I believe the, um, by being clear about the problems, um, we are the best people to work our way out of that, working together with the rest of the world. And, and that is one of the challenges about my understanding my work. I go back as an Anglican, as a Christian, as a Pacific leader, and also an universal leader. I take that with me and call to the leaders in the context. My first priority is 
get to know them and for them to get to know me? Can we understand one another? And then from there, I believe we will find a way forward. I believe that strongly. It's been an honor to meet you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.